I'm Anthony. Hi, Danielle. Nice to meet you. Come and have a seat. You? And turn towards me, because oh, okay. they're irrelevant. Yes. First, thanks very much for volunteering. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good. Tell me a bit about um, what made you want to volunteer for an Alexander session. Ooh, um, I guess um, I'm really interested in, I'll speak for myself, um, body-mind connection. Mm -hmm. I, I thought for a long time that I was very in connection with my body and actually I don't think I am. And I recently started exploring mindfulness, meditation, mm -hmm. CBT, yeah. and trying to be more compassionate with my experience and reconnect with my body. And also I had, I, I went to a very strict dance school as a kid, so I think my relationship with my body and its purpose can be a bit um, harsh. A bit punishing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think I just yeah, want to connect and to see what it's about, really. Yeah. I'm curious more. Well, you've got a great background in, in interest, mindfulness and mm. uh, therapy yeah. and uh, mind-body uh, yeah. inspirations. Great. Yeah. Okay, so the Alexander is a mind-body system, as you've probably gathered. Have you read a bit about it already? Not really. I, was, I went to drama school and did a master's a few years ago, and I had a voice teacher who'd very vaguely be like, oh, this is an Alexander technique thing. I'm like, well, which bit of what you're doing at the moment? So I, I'm mm. aware of it a little, but not. Mm. if I'm honest with you, I, I try not to read too much before I jump in, because otherwise I don't want to get an assumption. Perfect. Yeah. So open mind. Yeah. New moment. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to give you a, a typical or Anthony typical Alexander session mm -hmm. and feel free to ask any questions you okay. like while we're, we're working. That's good to know. Um, I like to understand what I'm doing yeah. when I'm doing it, so that's good. Yes. Right, so what we'll do is we'll start with you standing mm -hmm. and looking out of the window. Mm -hmm. and right, so take these off first. Absolutely, yes. So come back and this will be the chair that we'll be moving in, okay. in and out. Right there. Yep, and I'll move this out of the way. Okay, great. So you'll start looking out of the window mm -hmm. and I start doing my work. Mm -hmm. and, and the work I do, I, this is part of an Alexander lesson right now, is I move you. I, I do simple, simple movements with you, like I might move an arm, mm -hmm. lift an arm, and your, your role is to let me lift you or move you without helping. Mm -hmm. Or I might do the same thing with your head. I might move your head to the left or I might move your head up. And there's as far as you know, as far as you know how, you, you're leaving me to do the movements and you're, you're, you're just allowing the movement to occur. Mm -hmm. Obviously, sometimes you might anticipate and do the movement for me, but you don't have to do that on purpose. As far as possible, I'm going to just initiate the movement for you, all right? Mm -hmm. And as I said, any questions that come in, please feel free to ask. And the main thing to remember as we're going through today's session is that you can't fail here. You really can't. There's nothing you can do because I'm the guy on, on show mm -hmm. and I'm the one that's delivering the goods. And you're receiving as much as I give you or not, as the case may be. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is it normal mm. for emotions to sort of surface when the body Yes, it's very, very normal. Okay. Yes, yes. Are they surfing already? Yeah, yeah, like immediately. Yeah. Immediately, right. Yeah. What will happen, since you talked about emotions, nothing will surface that yeah. won't be manageable. I exactly. think that's really important. Yeah, I'm not worried. Thank yeah. you, though. Maybe it's an important time to just talk about why emotions do surface mm. when we start working. Is that um, when we're working together like this, I'm removing or helping you remove some distractions. So we're quite quiet. Mm. There's a, a quality of ease or relaxation where... You won't be so busy in your mind. Your mind might slow down, so the little internal distractions of busyness, which may muffle out some emotional sounds, mm -hmm. they're not so operative. Does that make sense? Does, yeah. So you've done some mindfulness meditation. Does anything happen and surface when you do mindfulness meditation? When I started, I felt a lot of agitation yeah. and mild level of stress, but yeah. I kind of mm -hmm. realised that Actually, that was important to sit with. Yeah, yeah. Because avoidance is somewhat of a, a thing, isn't it? Yeah, so, so it's, it's absolutely healthy and okay to avoid. It doesn't happen on purpose. Mm -hmm. And as you progress, there's a little bit more of a capacity not to avoid. And then things surface when they need to. Mm -hmm. 
It's not an effort, I'm going to stop my avoidance stuff. It won't be that sort of self-punishing oh, yeah. thing. Like your dance school. <laughs> Yeah, so it's an important thing to, to know that if things are surfacing, it means on some level your nervous system is handling or can handle whatever surfaces. Mm -hmm. If it can't handle, then it would, the nervous system would block things out. You'd distract yourself, you'd mm -hmm. tighten up more. Mm -hmm. You'd um, choose some behavior that would um, remove you from the experience. Yeah. So this may feel like, oh, nothing really is happening, but actually you allowing me to move you in this, in this way is, is quite, um, it's quite a step. Mm. You're leaving yourself open for someone else to move you. Well, that's already a big step, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Reminds me of what you said as well about sort of releasing control. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so we're all control freaks to a certain degree and you're, in, you're invited right now to not be such a control freak, which <laughs> means things are a bit more available inside yeah. of your experience. Yeah, a bit more fluid. More fluid, yeah. But it's not like we choose to be control freaks and we can't choose not to be control freaks, but it's, it's, it's the human condition. But you are invited in this Alexander work on some quite subtle level to not be such a control freak, but I'm not asking you to achieve it, mm -hmm. but somehow to influence your nervous system to manifest it. Mm. Now, all I want from you right now is to take your hips backwards as you bend the knees over your toes, all the way till you reach the chair. Yeah, reach the yeah. chair, that's perfect. All the way, yeah. yeah. What's tight? Achilles? Achilles, yeah. Mm. Is that normal? Yeah, always been that way. Mm. Can't really bend very well. That's okay. Your, your Achilles is absolutely fine for what we need to do. That's fine. I'm going to move you further forwards and stop. And I'm going to move you backwards. And I'm going to move you forwards. And then stop there and wait. And I'm going to move an arm, that's fine. If anything difficult comes up, feel free. I know it's not easy in a room of observers, but you can certainly um, share if you want to. Let me move you further forwards. I'll stop you there. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling a lot of emotion. Yeah. Not in a way that I'm worried about. But yeah. So you're experiencing emotions, you're allowing them to be there, to, you're feeling them, mm -hmm. but you're not over, they're not overwhelming you, as you say, you're not overly worried about them. No, you're not freaking out with them. No, they're an experience. Yeah. yeah. So in this Alexander work, unlike when things really distress us and traumatize us, in Alexander, the idea isn't to just have a repeat experience of a distressing event. That's not the point. Mm. The point is, that in this quieter, more relaxed and open condition to have an experience which doesn't overwhelm and doesn't overly distress. So it's a different way of having, uh, having an experience. Mm -hmm. You could say it's having an experience with all the lights on in your brain. Yeah, and it's contained. It's exactly, that's another meaning of the word containment. It's contained and it's not leaking out or spilling out. It's containable which therefore means it's processable. Mm. I'll take you further forwards and then stop. Yeah. Now, all I want from you right now is to stand up with your heels and feet. Exactly, that's fine. Yeah. How easy was that just then? Was it moving? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really aware I normally move. It wouldn't be normal, would it? Can you detect what might have been a bit different about that quality of movement? Yeah. The, mm. um, I'm trying to think of a better mm. word than the one that's in my head. The, the, if I was straight, I suppose, but a bit like sort of there's um, my back is okay. all one thing. All one thing, yes. I don't know how to put 
that. Like, yes. The word was rigid, but it's not, it doesn't feel... No, I'd say, I'd say that you didn't go into a sort of a relaxed it, collapse, so no. there was a certain upward power that, in it. That reminds me a bit of um, when I used to do yoga, when you bend mm. forward, it's like you're lifting upward to the chair. Yes, yes, there was an uplift in your, in your system when you came out of the chair, yeah. And it was all one. Yeah. It wasn't like one, two. Or I wasn't like using just my feet or just my back, which is often why I used That's to That's right, up. exactly. In fact, you didn't even use your back. Which is interesting. Which is very interesting. Yeah. What do you think about not using your back? Uh, good. I have, I over rely on my back, I think because of ballet. Yeah. All the pressure goes on my lower back. Especially the punishing ballet. Yeah. But just lifting stuff. Mm. So I have to constantly tell myself to use mm. my stomach. Yes. Which is just not normal. More the front of your body and not the back. I'm trying to connect with the front body a lot more mm. generally. Yeah. So right now, this is it. You are more in touch with the front of the body, the tummy, the chest. And take the hips back and slowly bend the knees mm -hmm. all the way to the stool. When you get to the stool, stop and wait there. And then stand up with the heels again. Exactly. And then bend the knees. I feel like a toddler, <laughs> but in a good way. You know how they run like Heel. with their weight forward. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Bend the knees. <laughs> bend the knees. Heels. That's it. And then bend the knees. And heels. So what do you think is going on in the neck and back? Um, I don't know. More release, oddly. I feel yes. more in my, my legs. Exactly. The front of the body. The front of the legs. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, you're right. Uh, the neck and back is releasing. It's not getting involved in, in the movement. Yeah. And the front of the body is doing something. It's just kind of following. It's following, yeah. Now put your feet a little wider. That's fine. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you talk about the front and the back because the back muscles, where you say you find yourself doing too much of, whether it's in punishing ballet or when mm -hmm. you're stressed, mm -hmm. that is the stress pattern. It's this one. That's one version of stress where the neck, the neck gets involved and the back gets involved and the back arches and the tummy and the chest are sort of left out of the story. It feels defensive. Like it, it is. It's yeah. avoidant. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's defensive avoidant. That's what we do when things are a little bit too much. And as you say right now, if the experience is more containable, you don't have to back off from it. Mm -hmm. You can face it mm -hmm. or front it. And hips back and bend the knees all the way. Mm -hmm. And I'll move you here. And again, I'm just moving the shoulder and I'll let it go. And you can just let your eyes wander outside and just see things, mm -hmm. see the trees, the grass. And now I'm going to move you forwards from your hips. Just down here? Uh, yeah, not yet. Yes, you could have done, but I'm going, I'll, I'll, I'll choose when that moment's going to be. And I'll move you forwards again, but not yet. Don't stand yet. Why do you think I might not want you to stand up straight away? What, what, what pattern might be evoked in the straight away? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, do you understand that one? Tighten up, kind of. Yeah, be stand. Yeah. Yes that the idea of getting out of a chair may make you repeat a certain stress pattern of ready. But also a sense of wanting to get it right. Get it right, that's another stress pattern, getting it right, or fear of going wrong, mm -hmm. or having a punishing ballet teacher mm -hmm. where you're terrified to mm -hmm. receive displeasure. Mm -hmm. And that also makes you go, you even did it with your hands, didn't you? Yeah. Did you feel that? Mm -hmm. So it's that pattern that we're neutralizing. Yeah. So my job is not to evoke that pattern that we all have, some more, some less, and to experience what it's like when that pattern of defense, what you call defense or avoidant pattern or bracing back pattern is minimized. Like an alternative. An alternative, yes. It is like an alternative brain pattern. Mm. So then the forwards is not 
the, the beginning of a preparation to freak out. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm taking you forwards and you haven't prepared your mind and body to defend against anything. Does yeah. that make sense right now? Yeah, it does. So I'm moving you backwards and stop. And no, there's no reaction. Do you know the word that comes to my head when you were just saying that was yeah. the idea of performance, of not having to be on? On show, on performance, or yes. Like, yeah. now is when I move. Yes, exactly. Now is when I move. Now, now I've got to get it right. Now I've got to perform. Now I'm on the button. Yeah, it's more yeah. kind of just moving. Yes, it's moving to move to move. Yeah. yeah. Rather than perform. Yeah. Even the way you said it, it's like, I've got to do this. Thing. Exactly. On. Yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And we're always on. You could say that's pretty much a, a first world problem. We're always on. We're never off. Mm -hmm. We don't have time off. That's so the on becomes a problem. Yeah, definitely. That's why I stopped being an actor, because there's no off. There's no off. Yeah. So here's the secret. My job is to help you find the off, mm -hmm. or not the on button all the time, and then mm -hmm. maybe reconnect to all the things that you want to do, but without having to be on the on button. So I wouldn't rule out anything. Let me help you move forwards. That's fine. So right now, you haven't done the button, have you? No. Okay, so right now, there is a mini performance, but without the button, so let's have a go. That's fine, and then you simply stand up with the heels. Yeah, and that was a way of standing, but without the button. Yeah. The button of preparation and the button of performance. Mm. So no, you're now experiencing yourself without so much of the button. Yeah. Like a, new, a, a different version of you but without being on. It feels like a little bit like being given permission. Do you know what I mean? Like it permission is. to not... I think that's exactly what it is. That's a lovely description. It is definitely about you and me together in this little bubble, mm -hmm. giving you permission mm -hmm. to be without the... Yeah, the, the role. That stuff. Whatever, yeah. That role, the habit. Mm -hmm. Alexander called them habits. Oh, yeah. uh, in somatic work, they might be called uh, adaptations. Mm -hmm. It's all the same stuff, and you're coming off it. And you're right, you're giving, I think it's more true also to say that you're giving yourself permission. Yeah. Also, the eyebrows can come off the ready button. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. So you just came off the eyebrows one. Sure, it's so funny, I'm laughing because my, <laughs> my partner sometimes just says to me, eyebrows, because he is my <laughs> tell when something's bothering me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's no hiding place. <laughs> the, the body reflects everything, if you know how to look at it. Yes, yeah. So that's another layer of coming off the mm. stuff happening, the readiness. Oh, that one's evoked quite a lot of emotion. It, it would do, mm. yeah. Without going into great detail, could you just mention which, what sort of quality of feelings arise? Uh, shame, I think, is mm. a strong one. Yeah. A sense of being not okay. Yeah, sense of not being okay, shame. Needing to be more. Be, yes. Do more. Yes. I'm showing I'm engaged, I'm doing more, I'm, being I'm performing, more being more appealing, more attractive, more yeah. more lovable, not so easily rejected. All of this stuff comes in. Yeah. yeah. And friendlier as well. Friend yes. Or an open actively open. Thing. Yes, 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 yes. That somehow there's a feeling that if I don't do all of that stuff I'm not so mm. inviting. Mm. Not so attractive, lovable. Yeah, they're quite deep things, aren't they? Yeah, if you they think are. about that, yeah. those things, very, very deep things. And you can imagine we get into these maneuvers, adaptive maneuvers, as a way of not having to feel those rather disturbing feelings. And they happen also with, with the body at the same time. And they work as well, don't they? I was just thinking that they're maladaptive, right? They're, you, I went to dance school at three. So yes. I'm not saying it's all dance school, but like. That's a way of getting that positive. It is, feedback. yeah. So. Yeah, have to contort yourself into certain shapes to get the, yeah. the right sort of response. Yeah. And you, you're probably right, it isn't just no. um, not school practice, when you're three, yeah. And then hips back and bend the knees. Mm -hmm. So when you're allowing these feelings to come up, which is I don't feel so 
attractive or lovable or, or experience some shame of not being enough. It's not just, oh, let's just re-experience all of this horrible stuff. There's a difference, isn't there? Because mm -hmm. you're experiencing it with a, another background. Yeah, it's more of an echo, isn't it? Really? It's more of an echo, yeah. And that's another lovely description. It's an echo because at the same time as you're experiencing this stuff, you're also okay. Mm -hmm. So it's an echo within this okay bubble. Yeah. Which means that these experiences can be processed or metabolized, digested, rather than just repeated. You don't want re-traumatizing re or re-experiencing something for the sake of it. Mm. But a, a new version, which is having an experience, but with the background of you're okay. As you said before, you cont you're containing it all. Yeah. So I'm moving you forward again, and then stop. And even now, you're not on that button of got to perform or show myself or be a certain way. Hmm. What's it like for the body to be in this condition of not having to show itself in a particular, uh, particular way? It's interesting because it's like a bit of a duality. Mm. And I feel relaxed, but also quite zingy. Yeah, yes. So relaxed, but not relaxed as in I could collapse and go to no. bed. Quite a, a vital, yeah. buzzy sort of. Vital is a good word. Yeah, mm. so that's, that is a lovely combination. It is you're mindful and alive and alert. It's not the relaxation after a nice massage where you want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, so it's like calming down my body has allowed me to feel the, the energy inside it. I That's right. It's, uh, yes, I think when you take away the distractions of the busy mind-body, you're more available to experience what's just under the surface but has been pushed away or muffled or yeah. hidden through the maybe overactivity of the brain or certain behaviours. The distractions. The distractions, yeah, and that's what we do. I mean, they're quite useful. They're good friends until we don't need them anymore. Mm. Let me move you further forwards and then stop. I'll move you backwards again. So you can see we're moving around, but my job is to help you not press the button. It's really interesting. Yeah, and then same thing now, stand up with the heels. Brilliant. What was that like to stand like that? Yeah, it's, it's easy. Hmm. I mean, obviously you're helping me. Oh, I didn't lift you, you know that, don't you? I couldn't lift you with that amount of... Oh, okay, I felt like you were doing a lot. It might, yeah, that's the illusion. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yes, it felt like, it couldn't be so easy unless Anthony was lifting half of me or something. Yeah, it does but, feel like if I would be able to do that if you weren't there. I do feel myself, I feel like I tend to roll in as a person, like I feel my in, inner knees. Yes. But I think maybe because I don't want to use that bit of my body maybe. Yes, you wouldn't be used to using the quad, so they may um, feel the strain a little bit of being used for the first mm. time in this way. Yeah. But yes, the idea of that, you felt I was somehow lifting you out of a chair. Well, I can assure you I was doing no more than that. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but because you're used to a, a level of effort that you have got used to, when you get out of the chair with such a minimum amount of effort, you'll think, well, that's impossible unless someone's lifting me. So right now, take the hips back and bend the knees. Yeah, and wait there. Yeah, that's fine and do nothing here. I'm going to take you further forwards. Yes, and absolutely nothing here. Good. All right, can you feel that my hand's quite gentle there? Yeah. It's not doing very much. Mm. Fine. Okay. So now, gently stay back with me. That's fine. And then stand up with the heels. All right, did I lift you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. So that, hopefully, challenge the illusion that somehow I was helping you. Now, it's true, I was helping you, so I don't want to be too um, yeah. unfair about it. So I am helping you because I'm here. So I'm influencing the way you're using your energy mm. and your body and mind. Mm. So there's an influence, but it's not a mechanical influence of Anthony's going to help me mechanically out of the chair with effort. It's quite an interesting message, isn't it, though, the idea that I can do more for myself than I think I can. Well, that's exactly it. It shows your potential which is the whole purpose of Alexander lessons, not to have this influence when you're around uh, 
me here in this room, mm. but to be able to have this capacity for ease and efficiency and lightness yeah. uh, without a teacher. In other words, it, it, it's internalized, it's yours. Oh, it's really beautiful, really, that sort of facilitation. Yeah, and our role is to repeat that. So it becomes like a new pathway in your brain that is owned by you mm. and not simply evoked here in, in, in the formal lesson. That's it, yeah. And again, now take the hips back and bend the knees again. Yeah. And I didn't help you into the chair, really, did I? I didn't no. take your weight into the chair. It's kind of the image that came into my head is when someone's teaching a kid to learn a bike and the kid doesn't know that the person's let go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm just kind of pedalling. Yeah, or they think that the stabiliser wheels are still on. Yes, yeah, exactly that. <laughs> or the, the little kid that's swimming and thinks they've still got wings on, but they've yeah. been deflated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fine. Let me take you backwards and forwards. That's it. Mm. <laughs> I feel quite happy all of a sudden. It's quite a nice feeling. Yes. That's another important thing to remember. It's not just difficult emotions that can surface. Mm -hmm. They can be quite joyous ones. joyous ones too. So when we stifle stuff, we tend to stifle the whole lot. Yeah, that's such a good point. Let me move you further forwards and stop. Mm -hmm. And then stand up with the heels and then walk around the room. Oh, just Oh, just there and back just to the chair. That was... That's it, and then come back. Good. <laughs> Walking towards you, really. It is weird, isn't it? Yeah. What I want from you now is to move it on onto some table work. Mm -hmm. Perfect. This reminds me of drama school with a book. Did you do the same thing? Yeah, our voice teacher, we had to do semi supine, but I had to tell you honestly, I hated it. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see what happens then. Yeah. <laughs> So, my role again is to move you around, and your role is to let me do the moving, just like before. Okay. And if anything gets, again, difficult or hateful, you certainly let me know. <laughs> okay. What was it like to move across the room like that? heavy in my shoes were, <laughs> um, <laughs> but also mildly, again, aware of people watching. Yeah, yes, and yeah, and that's a reality, yeah. Yeah. Because in a way, even though you're not, you are on stage. Yeah, but I suppose doing that very young, quite... You're used to some of that. Just so, ignoring, yeah. like, not being aware. Did you learn to blank out? The yeah, audience. it's very odd. When I used to do shows, I could feel the energy of the audience, and if someone was losing focus in the corner, I'd be like, I'm just going to throw you a little, little energy over there, and then I could feel them <laughs> coming back in again. So it's weird, because you're like completely unaware of everybody, but also completely aware of them at the same time. So very sensitive to what was going on. Yeah. Mm. I think that's why I enjoyed being on stage so much, because yeah. it's like, I felt disconnected but connected at the same time. Yeah. When did you give it all up? Uh, I gave it up twice. Once when I was 18, and then once again, oh, officially three years ago, but in my heart about two years before that, I think. I just wasn't built for it, like the actual industry. It's not a pleasant place to be, and I just thought, why would I do this to myself? Did it feel unkind? Yeah, deeply unkind. And no one yeah. cares. No one cares. It was quite weird. I don't know how to say it's outside me strange, but mm. my teachers used to tell me I had a gift. 
but there was no space to express that bit of myself and I thought I can't wait for opportunities that are going to come to me to connect with this part of myself and so I found other ways to connect with it really mm. in different guises I suppose that sensitivity I suppose yes seems like you were unfortunate to be on the receiving end of people that didn't really know how to honour your gift in a way that could liberate you. Yeah, that kind of sucked, actually. Mm. In Russia, I went to Russia, studied there. That was a beautiful experience. But, you know, it's like being in a bad relationship. You kind of got to cut your losses. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the arm. That's it. Feeling a bit of pinch, not pinching, a little bit of pain mm. just above or below. I can't tell where your hand is. Somewhere yeah. around there. No, on my shoulder blade below. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're causing discomfort. Yeah, yeah. But so where do you feel that? Und under these, underneath the, the shoulder. Yeah, under the shoulder blade. Yes. That yeah. fleshy bit there. So I'm going to lift you. Mm. So things can reorganise themselves and cause some discomfort. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not you're not holding yourself. No. Maybe that's why it's a mm. bit more. Um, yeah. Do you get any regular aches, pains anywhere? Yeah, in my Where? hip, right hip. Mm -hmm. um, so around the back, at the top of the joint. How so regular? Right, how regular do you get? It that? was really bad during lockdown when I wasn't walking much. Yeah. Um, if I walk for a long time, it can just go, and like mm. almost I start limping actually. Hmm. As a result of the discomfort, or, or yeah, uh, it's just very tight and painful, and I can't mm. really um, very stiff. Mm. So I've just been babbling. I've no idea what they're saying to you. I'm absolutely out of my mind. Well, so. It's all recorded. Great. <laughs> That's what I love to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, from my perspective, I haven't heard anything that's incoherent. Do you know what is so funny? Because I completely forgot all that. I was just telling you. Yeah, I'll tell you something <laughs> secret. Uh, <laughs> It's something that happens. <laughs> Never mind, it's all right. That's good. I've got quite a lot of, I don't know if it's a lactic acid, but mm. there's something in my mouth that's, um, it's, it's the feeling I get actually before I'm going to cry. But I'm not going to cry, mm. but I'm not holding myself. But that kind I've of, got tissues, it's okay. That's all right. Mm. Thank you. That kind of sticky feeling you get. Mm. Yeah. That you know that something's just bubbling up to the surface. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this may not be an easy place to allow tears, but anyway, uh, in, under normal circumstances, it's yeah. absolutely um, a regular, normal occurrence yeah. when you allow feelings of sad into your system. They always seem to end up bottled up at my throat. Right yeah, that's a good junction to bottle things up. People often hold back sadness with, with throat and with, um, with jaw tension. <laughs> That's a very common. Yeah. You know that one? I've heard it um, from people who also reflected it in myself as well. Mm. I actually have a gum guard for when I sleep because I... You grind. Oh yeah. Mm. I actually bit through it in three months. Oh goodness. I didn't realise how well. Uh... Mm. <sighs> So right now you're invited not to do so much in the throat, jaw, neck. Mm. And that's why those feelings are perhaps coming up. And why I'm probably talking so much. Maybe, yes. Liberating the speech centre as well. Of course, I don't know what you normally like, whether you're normally... I mean, pretty much the same. I'm not going to lie to you, I can't really control my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I feel yeah. comfortable, so... You know. yeah. yeah. So I've got the head and your lying movement, that's it. So right now I'm able to move your head and move your leg at the same time. It's 
It's a really beautiful ceiling. It's nice, isn't it? It's lovely. How's your back doing on the table at yep, the moment? Yeah, that's fine. And what's happening with that? Um, Slightly sicky feeling. Oh, it's, yeah, it's gone a little. I feel a bit hmm. tense, but not as sick. That's it. So leave the knees there for a little while. That's it. So on a purely physical level, what does the back feel like on the table? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I feel it more on my left side, mm -hmm. like that's making more contact than the right. It's certainly more contact than it was before, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Feels, um, I feel the, I don't know, you know those muscles that go down the side of the spine? Yes. I feel that quite keenly on the left. Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. yeah. My legs feel less... Um, well, a bit more wibbly, just kind of going where they yeah, want to go. that's it. Not so held. Yeah, quite. quite yes. Yeah, that sort of quality there. And yeah. they're very available. Yeah. Like they could almost sort of blow over. Yeah, they could, yes. So you're really holding them up there with a minimum of tension. And yeah. All it needs is for me to come over and do that and they'd move. There's no... Hardly any effort at all from me. It's just. So is it about like being economic then? Certainly, economy is going to be one of the byproducts of this work. Yeah. Rather than overly expending unnecessary energy. Yeah. Mm. It's like if I went around the day like that, it's a bit of a waste of energy. Yeah, it could go somewhere else. Yeah, it could go somewhere else. Yeah. I just realised I was holding some tension in my chest. I think I felt a bit subconscious. Mm -hmm. And go. probably, I was going to say, the second you said it, you'd probably already let it yeah. go. Yeah. Which is why I'm never asking you to let go of anything. Mm -hmm. Because actually, the invitation happens by itself. And you'll let go what you let go of. And then you'll realise, oh, I've just let go. Or I was holding, I've just let go. Yeah. You know, you asked me about my back. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, kind of, I realise it's so. I don't know how to say it, but it's it's a, it's allowing a lot more front body feelings. Yes, yes. If that makes sense. It does because the back is very flat, and all of this is much more available. Yeah. And uh, you you you've got it more in your sense picture mm -hmm. that you have a front. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit of like anxiety trembles actually. Yeah, trembles are all, all, all good stuff. Trembles is when a lot of stuff comes out of the out of the system. Yeah. Yeah, I have a twitch that happens when I'm releasing stress and mm -hmm. it's definitely there. Yeah. I can feel it in my arms. Yes. So that's a, like a little mini tremble in your yeah, yeah, I just yeah. have really bad, big, big ones. Mm. So we want to allow those things as you are right now, but in a, in a new, exactly that, yes, in a new experience. And the experience, what do you think is different about just the shakes happening in your, in your arm and what you're doing here with allowing these shakes and twitches? What's the difference? It feels more like, um, okay, two words have come up, which mm. is chimney, <laughs> almost like a flume has yeah. been created, Yes. but also just um, so that more cathartic, I, I, my, funny enough my GP recommended um, trauma release exercises to me, mm -hmm. 
Mind you, a little bit like that when you sort of <laughs> sorry, there's way yeah. to take that. Never apologise for that's that. That's that's organic. Out. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so the difference is you're allowing it now because you're allowing it and it's, your system says it's okay to allow these yeah. stresses yeah. to hmm, shiver themselves out. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it feels phys- physical mm. rather than emotional. Yes. Sensor, sensor oil. Yes, sometimes sensor. it may feel just like a physical sensation and sometimes you might experience some of the feelings associated with it, and neither are right or wrong. So yes, there's a lot of shaking and trembling as you're coming off yeah. shock, mm-hmm. perhaps but shock. They, yeah, they started with a traumatic event, and then I think they just, they still yeah. haven't worked their way out yet. Yes, well, well, they're doing what they need to do right now, that's for sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a question? Mm. Are my feet aligned with each other? Yeah, I'm sure much. you would have put them in alignment. They just yeah. feel not well, reasonably symmetrical. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, maybe not to the millimetre, but. No, it's um, funny how they feel. Yeah, pretty much spot on. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that was a centimetre or so further in front. Yeah. Near as damn it. Yeah. Yeah. How are the feet feeling right now? Yeah, fine. No, it's not the other one. I think I'm holding on a bit because every time I fully relax, my tremors come back. That's okay. You can always come again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your system knows when it's um, when it's had enough, and um, you've probably had quite a quite a meal for one day, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Keep your eyes open there. Is it, is it a bit bright? Are you okay? No, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in this condition in the sitting and standing work and the lying down work. You're allowing quite a lot of um, processing. Yeah. But not intellectual process. Not intellectual, exactly. It's not something you have to work out up here. It's almost like the body knows what to do. Yeah. As it's coming out of perhaps a, a certain deep freeze mm-hmm. or shock or trauma, as you have mentioned, your body is shaking itself free. Peter Levine talks a lot about that. Yeah, uh, uh, waking the tiger. Waking the tiger, and based on the image of the tiger that freezes and then comes out of freeze organically and that's what, that may be what we can describe as your condition. I have the book and I've never read it and I feel like I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I've recommended it to so many people <laughs> because I know it's useful. It's one of those ones that I'm just like... Oh, well, now you're living it, it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's that other one, isn't there? Your body keeps the score. Oh, that's another very good one. The body keeps the score. And there's yes. the lovely Matisse painting on the front of the book. Yes, yes. The dancers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lovely, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. I started seeing a CBT therapist who works with a lot of um, ballerinas. Mm-hmm. He said they tend to carry a lot of shame. I found that very interesting. Uh, I can understand that, yeah. I'm sure the teaching methodology doesn't help that very much, oh, does no. it? Well, just physically, as, as a, as a practice but also the kind of teaching it attracts yeah yeah it's a double whammy really yeah and having to present yourself all the time in a yeah. perfect perfectly with your feet doing the right thing and all the rest of it i think that's yeah. why i became the class clown actually that's a good way of it's a good diversion yeah. yes <laughs> yeah
Okay, so now I'm going to move you off the table. Leave that knee where it is. Yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. And in a second, I'm going to hold your head and you're going to roll over this way. Towards you. Towards me, and then you'll be sitting on the side of the table before you come off. And yeah, you just start to roll feet over the side of the like table. That? Yeah, exactly. And the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Just give yourself a few moments to reorient yourself. And then you can help yourself off the table. Fine. And I'm going to leave my hand here as you walk towards your chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take it easy and stand here. Mm -hmm. That's fine, yes. And you can just bend the knees again. Yeah, all the way to the stool. I've got you. A bit out of it, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you've, you've had a big meal. Yeah, okay. All right, so that's it, leaving the legs. Okay. Do you want your glasses? That'd be nice, thank you. Then you can see me when you talk to me. Okay. Very grubby glasses, I just realised how grubby these are. <laughs> Good. Thank you very, very much for Thank that. Thank you. Anything that's, that you want to share or do you just want to uh, uh, leave it there? Not that you have to think about anything no, at all. No, the answer is I think I need to be mindful when I'm uh, crossing the street on the way back to the tube, is what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I would say take a little while before you move out of here, have a glass of water yeah. and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you've actually had a, as I said, a big meal. You've just done a lot of work just now. Yeah, I've had a big journey. You've had a big journey, yes. And um, so, yeah, being gentle with yourself on the way back is very important. Yeah, thank you very, yeah. very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for being very courageous to present yourself, especially as a performer that's had Good. sometimes <laughs> unkind experiences. Uh, you've been very, very uh, courageous in, in, in showing up and, and uh, allowing yourself to go through the the journey of experience. Thank you. It's not just, just, just mm. I guess when I say the word courage, I always makes me think of the word heart, and there's a real sense of leaning. I feel very lent forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, you Metaphorically. Yeah, well, you're very engaged. Yeah, that's what it feels like, but thank you for creating mm. such a safe space. I appreciate it very much. Thanks again for coming.